Hey, it's 2012 Olympian Mark Reeder and Reed Hall here. Uh, we're going to stay with the topic on how to improve the height of your spike approach. In the last video, we talked to you about the importance of our final two steps. This one, we're going to dig into an arm drive, and that is critical for you getting up. So we just came out of a camp this weekend, mastery camp. We saw a lot of room for opportunity with the arms alone. Reed, what are you seeing with the arm action that really gets you fired up? Like, where can we improve within this immediately? Yeah, I, I see the arm drive is often weak and it's late. But before I dig into those two points, I want you to understand there's two different arm drives. So it's highly debated amongst coaches and athletes. Do we use a really long arm drive or do we shorten that step in that arm drive up? And so I actually want to elaborate on what's right. I think they're actually both right, but it depends on the athlete, the situation, and the position that you play. Let's start with position. Yep. If I'm a middle hitter, let's say I got longer lever arms, but I'm in a tighter time constraint, what would be a way that we work with the lever arm to then work with the position? Absolutely. So as a middle player, these are often taller, and should I say sometimes more awkward athletes. Uh, these guys, it's sometimes more important for them to be there fast than how high they can possibly be, right? Sure. You're running quicks or you're coming in and running a shoot, right? Your movements have to be quick. So for them, I actually suggest shortening your second last step a little bit. And you see I'm going to use a smaller arm drive so I can be there quicker. Yeah. So the thing you need to understand the difference between the two arm drives is this small arm drive is faster because there's less range of motion. So as soon as my feet hit, I can get up quick. Yeah. But me as a smaller left side player, I needed a longer arm drive because that can produce more power, but it takes more time. So if I'm coming here with my big step, so raise this foot hits, my arms are already there, and I drive. I have better and a lot more loading time. So I'm here, I'm loaded, I can use more muscle spirit, but it's a longer arm drive. You can see the radius of my arms, my hand that has to move is much longer. So smaller arm drive, shorter lever, faster, less powerful. Longer arm drive, Longer lever, longer but more powerful. So that longer lever arm is likely going to be your outside hitter, likely going to be that right side, offside, just because you have time, right? A lot of this comes down to time and the speed of that arm. Yeah. So let's get into some ways that we can improve that arm drive. Yeah, and so right now I just want to more focus just on the technique of it than like exercise specifically for. Okay. But if I'm going to use a longer and smaller arm drive, the thing that I would, I would continue working on a two-step approach, but if I work on my longer arm drive, I'm going to step with the right, as soon as my right hits the ground, my arm's always there and I'll finish under. So if I'm going to work on this long arm drive, it's step free. So hold there for a second. Yep. When you take that first step, Reed, reach back and kind of give a side profile so people can see. So look at Reed right here. He's already reaching fully back when this is happening. So he's early. He's fully committed and early, which means that the second that foot comes in and closes, opens his hip to the center, now he's already loaded with his arms and he can come through. So he's not waiting any extra moment for his arms to reach back. He's already locked and loaded just before he needs to be. Waiting kills you. As soon as this foot hits the it's up so I can go. If you're gonna use your smaller arm drive, this step is still big, that second last step, but it's not quite as long. Because when you increase the length of that step, you're building a more speed and power, but you're also increasing the length of loading time. So if I'm gonna use a faster drive, it's smaller, and I'm ready to go. So once again, you'd be here, and just working on the mechanics of that. And that's kind of the, the first layer of the onion. So let's just talk about the middle hitting, because when you have that shorter lever arm, you can actually open up and disassociate your shoulders from your hips a little bit yeah. more. That longer one might be a little bit more complicated and slower. So there's also an advantage as a middle athlete to have that short drive, because now you can get a quick snap through the hips and a faster arm swing, which is timely, right? Absolutely. And uh, something is funny, I'd actually say 90% of the time I use a long arm drive, and 10% I use a short arm drive. And me as a left side, when my setter would leave me inside, I have to do whatever I can just to speed up to the ball, and I have to use that shorter arm drive in order to actually be there and contact and attack the ball. So what we're talking about here is the skill set. It's not a one size fits all. It's actually having a tool belt with all these different approaches, and different arm swings within that tool belt, right, Reed? Absolutely. And so, uh, this video we focus on the what about the arm drive. The next one, we're going to give you specific exercise that we can work on that. Uh, please, if you found this helpful, like, share. If you're watching on this YouTube, subscribe below. It's Martin Reader here. It's Reed Hall. We'll catch you later.